Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I'm making this follow-up video on the Sun Fun Kits sales to let you know that I screwed something up. Uh, this doesn't affect the capacity of the cells, but one of the things that I discovered, or thought I discovered, was that the cells came to me with vastly different states of charge. If you watch that video, uh, the tester showed that one of the cells required 160 amp hours to charge, one required 151, I think that's the right numbers. And then the third and fourth only required 81 and 74 amp hours to charge, which indicates about a 75% state of charge. And that's really was really troubling to me, as you can see in that video. I realized this morning, I remembered what I had done. So I wanted to get this video out about the Sun Fun Kits battery build. I wanted to get the battery built and, and get that video out before I did this trip. I'm, uh, I'm at a gathering of building scientists learning about, you know, building science. It's a passion of mine. And I wanted to get this video out because the Sun Fun Kits had sent me this kit and I didn't want it to sit another week while I was out of town. So I was, you know, I'm going to work every day, but I went ahead and started charging these and discharging these cells. And I used the EBC A40L 40 amp tester to charge the cell up, let it rest, and then, and, and when I charge it, I charge it up and then I let the amperage tail off to one amp, it's the protocol, and then I let it rest, and then I discharge down to 2.5 volts, and then I charge back up to a storage level. Now, that takes altogether about 16 hours or so, and so when I've been testing all these hundreds of cells that I've tested, I used other power supplies to charge the cells up to near full. I let the EBC A40L finish that process so that the tailing off is the same, so the cells will all have the same uh, test result. But I let some of the other power supplies do the heavy lifting. Uh, well, I only charge them at 20 amps, but do, do like the heavy lifting of getting the cell uh, ready. And then once the discharge test is over, I use other power supplies to charge those cells back up to the storage, uh, to a storage level. In this case, I only had four cells to do, so I put them in the fixture and I use the EBC A40L to charge them up, rest, discharge, and then charge them back to storage level. And it takes a while. Well, while I was doing that to the first two cells, I used one of the other power supplies to pre-charge the third and fourth cell about halfway to where they needed to be to be fully charged. And then when I did the test on those third and fourth cells with the, with the 40 amp tester, I forgot that I had done that. And so when I saw the results, I was like surprised. Why did this only take so much? And I just forgot that I had already put some energy into those cells. So in that video about the test results, I talked about how vastly different that was and how, you know, you could never really get uh, a balancer to overcome a 80 amp state of charge difference. And that was all based on me making a mistake. Now, that's not true. I still believe that you need to top balance your cells. You, you, I also believe you need to test your cells. The thought of taking these cells and just putting them together 
and letting the chips fall where they may as far as balancing, that's going to work out for you sometimes, for sure. It's not going to work out for you sometimes, too. You need to know what you have, and you need to top balance the cells before you put it together. And I, whether or not you use an active balancer in your batteries at all is another subject that we can go into on a different video. Uh, this video is about integrity. When I realized that I had made the mistake, I knew I needed to come to you. You're the ones I'm responsible to. And I needed to come to you and tell you right away that that happened. I was in the building industry for 40 years. In the building industry, all we have is our integrity. Um, I learned early on that you can never screw up by admitting a mistake. It's, it builds who you are to yourself, to your clients, and to your workers. And you have to be that person that they can all trust. Because too many people in the building industry are trying to hide from their mistakes and blame things on others. And they somehow think that they can only be accepted if they're perfect. Or they're trying to keep from paying a penalty for making a mistake. So let me tell you a couple of stories. And there are a lot of stories like this, but I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. I was working on a house, multi-million dollar house, contemporary, it, and it had a center line down through the middle of it that everything was based on. The fireplace, the kitchen, everything was, was, had to be lined up on this center line. And I would check that every once in a while and make sure everything was still going right because you don't want to make a mistake and then build on it. And one afternoon I was checking that with a carpenter and I was doing the math and I came up with a five inch discrepancy that there was a five inch discrepancy with something on my center line and it was all built in stone around it and steel, black and steel inset into the stone and I called the architect and and I asked her, is there something I'm missing here? Um, I seem to have a five inch problem. There wasn't, there, it's supposed to all line up on the center line, right? And she said, yeah, it, it is, but don't worry, you're, you're gonna be fine. I, I, I have faith in you. No, no, you don't understand. I've got a five inch problem. I've got to figure this out. And I called my boss next and told him I screwed up and to fix this is going to take tens of thousands of dollars. And he said, well, I'll come look at it with you in the morning. Don't worry. And the next morning he was, I was ready to give my resignation to the client who I'd worked for for years. And my boss was out front talking on the phone in his truck before he came in. And I grabbed the carpenter and said, let's do these numbers again. And I discovered that when I did the math, I had forgotten to carry a one. And so I was off by 10 inches in the big number. And I divided that by two to find the center line. And I was off by five inches. And everything was really absolutely perfect. But I had done the math at four o'clock in the afternoon on a hot day after I was exhausted. And <laughs> I learned not to do math at four o'clock in the afternoon if it matters. And, um, but when you make a mistake, I, I just have to go to the people right away and tell them about it. And sometimes even when I don't make a mistake, I went to a birthday party and there were about 40 people there, 30 people there. And I got out of my car and the, a woman that I know was getting out of her car across the parking lot and I saw her drop the cake upside down in the parking lot. And I rushed over and I grabbed that cake and I picked it up and put it on my hand and said, let me fix this. I can, I know what to do. And I ran in there and 
I was a much younger man. I ran in there and I said, I screwed up y'all. I dropped the cake and that woman had a lot on her plate right then and she didn't need this to burden her. I took that burden. Yeah, it wasn't true that I had dropped the cake, but taking responsibility for something that she had done, I was fine with that too. But we definitely have to take responsibility for the things that we do when we make a mistake. We can't be perfect, but we can be honest. And we can fess up. And we can gain the respect and the admiration of those around us. Never be afraid to be wrong. <laughs> You're going to be. And being afraid of it isn't going to help. I'm going to go home and I'm going to take that battery. I, I built that battery just before I got on the airplane. It did not take 30 minutes. It took a whole lot longer. I was up late at night finishing that battery. And I'm going to publish a video about it soon. I'm going to actually have to do some editing, which I really didn't ever want to do on this channel, but I've got to shorten that video some. It just took too long. And so I'm going to have to do some editing. But when I get home, I'm going to take that battery back apart. And I built it so that I could. And I'm going to test those cells again, and I'm going to confirm the capacity results of those cells. And I'll let you know what I find. In the meantime, I hope y'all have a great day. I hope you learned something about me, about yourself. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.